happens. Um, so through that process, um, what we did is look at that vision of excellence, and we broke it down into three main parts, um, three main sections. And we used this Prezi because we were able to uh, break out and do this Prezi as a collaborative group. Uh, every part of this presentation is a representation of the work that we've all done, and we try to do different modes. Um, we did do this online as well as come together as a team. Um, so we broke, the, broke this down into three sections, assessment tools and types, use of data, and student role. So you're going to see that broken down into three sections. Okay. And some of the questions that actually framed our thoughts were, um, what is the current status of the vision of excellence as far as assessment goes? What are the artifacts that support the findings? And what is going well? And what do we need to do better to move forward? Um, so then we're going to start this meeting. So this is through our lens, and so uh, it just represents our personal experiences in our buildings. And so as long as we're talking about assessment, we're going to gather some formative assessment today from all of you. Um, we've got a series of four questions. You're going to have about 30 seconds as a team to kind of rate collectively where you see your school in terms of not only philosophically but operationalized in terms of where is this occurring, not that it's occur in people's heads, but where is it really playing out in classrooms? And uh, we're going to use something called Responders. Um, if you have iPads, there's also an app called uh, Socrative, I believe. So if you have these in your classroom, the same way to gather lots of formative assessment prior to instruction. Um, we pulled this list together pretty quickly. We apologize if your group or your school is not represented. We would never do that purposely. So, <laughs> all right, that's my disclaimer. Okay, thank you. First, I'm going to walk you through using the Smart Responder process. Um, the first thing you're going to need to do is push the upper, upper left hand button. If you haven't used these before, you're going to want to get, um, that's how you're going to turn it on. And maybe we could just kind of have a show of hands when, when everyone, you're on. When you're on, <laughs> so we can keep moving through it. You're going to, the next step is you're going to get an ID. <laughs> where it's going to ask for ID, and that's where you're going to use your sheet to refer to your ID that your group is working with. Find, oh, find a classes first? I yeah. have already done that. Find a class you're going to join. ILT is the class. And then after you've done that, you're going to sign in. It would be a yes, the Y for yes. And then you're going to see a question set. What we're looking for here is for you to collaborate quickly. And the reason we're asking you to do this quickly is we're what we want real-time um, perceptual data from you. We don't need long discussion. It's just kind of your first gut feeling as a group. Where do you feel you are as a building? Is everyone set to go? No. 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 How do you ID. I got it. Sweet. ID is your number off your sheet. ID is number off sheet. It has to be, has to be for this. You need six the zero. Yes, you need the zero. If you're a digit like four, it has to be zero four. Yeah. Hands up if you need more time. It's not ready. Okay. okay. All right. Let's go to the first and question. Here we go. And all answers on all five questions have the same <coughs> answer response. You're going to focus in on the question. Grade level or department teams meet regularly to analyze student assessment data and plan instruction. A, all staff consistently applying in our school or department. B, the majority of staff consistently applying in school department. C, some pockets of consistent application in our school department. D, minimal consistent application in our school department. <coughs> You'll see on the left hand slide as you enter your score, we're going to see in real time what, uh, what um, information we're coming up with as a district. So okay. talk on your teams, give a vote, got about 30 seconds, go. Don't forget to press enter after you select your choice. Ten seconds. Let's take a look quickly. Okay, so here currently in our audit situation happening right now, B, 
B is our strongest answer with the majority of staff consistently applying school or department. This is data you can take back to your schools, have further conversation. We can talk as a district. Next question. Two, students are given formative and summative assessments that are used in tandem for grading for learning. 30 seconds, talk with your team. Or to yourself if you're <laughs> Are the results going to be publishable yeah. for us so that we can use yeah. okay. Thank you. Okay, about 10 seconds. And Joe asked if this information would be made available to all of us in some form. We will get it out to the ILT team. Okay. Okay, so here we're seeing again the majority. Your staff is our strongest answer. Answer. What I'm noticing right away is that no one is replying D. That no one is at minimal. That's that's a strength. Uh, we're all applying it at some different level. Next question. <laughs> Students are given flexible options of assessment formats, such as visual, oral presentations, wicker, portfolio, and performance tasks. About 30 seconds. And again, these are the expectations and the vision of excellence that we're supposed to be at by the end of this year. About 10 seconds. All right. Okay. And I think if you look at the graph up on the um, projector, that kind of that data speaks for itself. An area of maybe possibly there could be some conversation to target for. Next question: Four students are given multiple opportunities over time to demonstrate proficiency. Okay. Talk amongst your teams based on what you really? see. About ten seconds. Okay. All right. Um, here we see kind of an uneven distribution. This would be a great thing to be talking about. What are some of those um, sites or departments? that are scoring the A, what are they doing? Because they're doing something pretty incredible for students, giving those multiple opportunities, so having conversations that we can build on. Also, B, people are starting to implement some of those opportunities for students. And the last question is five. Students are given opportunities for self-assessment that foster self-awareness and self-advocacy, such as personalized learning goals, rubrics matched to assignments, and individualized progress monitoring. Talk to your partner. A and B are the same. A and B are the same. Oh, B should be majority. B should be majority. Thank you. B should be majority. Okay. About ten seconds. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, we are going to close out this part of the presentation. We will be sharing this information. One of the reasons we wanted to use the Smart Responders is because this is a way at your site you can get um, very real time formative assessment that can can drive your instruction for students. And also, if you have some really talented teachers, which I know you do. I've seen them use this at the beginning of a lesson to determine flexible grouping for instruction just seconds after the results come up because you can also see when students have entered what. So, thanks. And so we'll go into our present presentation. I thought this was a great way to start out to get some formative assessments so we can have some real-time evidence. And then this next portion is really what our team has provided as far as evidence of, that we've seen as, as far as the vision of excellence in assessment. So, When our district has talked about assessment, um, 
we've talked very often about a balanced assessment system uh, with different types of assessments for different purposes. And I also was remembering that we had a graphic that we often looked at called 360 degrees of data. When we currently talk about assessment, oftentimes what comes to mind first is the academic assessment portion and component of that. And we have a whole lot of tools and types when it comes to that, such that sometimes we may be hearing from our staff that they feel like maybe all they're doing is assessing at times. But there are different purposes and tools. Um, we're skipping further ahead than intended, so I'm going to slide us back to the academic tools portion. Um, and we know that we've always had those high stakes standardized assessments, but our district over the last few years, we knew we needed benchmark assessment that we could use to look at how we are doing over time more frequently. And so MAP has really changed our world when it comes to that. And at secondary, there's also ACT Plan and Explore with it. We have many ongoing assessments, running records, and assessment tools linked to some web uh, services and instructional programs that we use, diagnostic tools serving other purposes, and uh, most recently, one of the innovations has been for progress monitoring Ames Web in the last year. That that had been a missing link, and we've been consistently implementing that now with PD just this morning on it. And then the key piece in terms of classroom formative and summative assessment that we just were uh, thinking about in terms of um, a dipstick with how that's going in our schools. The other area besides academic. Another area that we have collected data in is obviously student engagement. Uh, we have, you know, the, the normal things that all of us collect in terms of attendance data. We get our state report cards, um, internal analysis of where we're at in terms of our, our, our uh, absentee rates, our tardies, uh, our truancy rates, those kind of things play into that. Uh, we've taken the Gallup student engagement poll starting in fifth grade and all the way on up. Gives us a pretty good indication of, of where our students are at. Um, with uh, each individual building. Some of our behavioral data analysis, um, can read there the suspension referral rates. Those of us at our PBIS schools have that uh, Swiss data that tracks just about everything imaginable. It gives us the, gives us the data of where things are occurring in the building, when they're occurring, um, how many times. So it's a, it's a good source for us to really track all of that. And then uh, buildings have perception surveys uh, through families, community, and uh, that varies through uh, varies by site. What are some of the things that we've done to uh, evaluate our assessment tools? We have the uh, the high quality rubric design, uh, the assessment audit tool that we've worked on here within our our own group. We've broken out into you know the rooms and, and worked on you know whether or not that tool is a useful tool or if we need to modify it uh, to make it even better. Uh, analyzing student work, uh, that protocol, uh, the buildings are, are using that. How many times during the year is that done where teachers actually take something that's been done, either a formative assessment, summative assessment, some, some assignment, large assignment where they break it down to see where differentiation can occur as well as any kind of interventions that might happen as well. And then, of course, the collaborative analysis, uh, using our map data, for example, uh, sitting down as, as uh, either as uh, Java likes <clears throat> or with uh, teams working on that and looking at our data and seeing where that need that need is for any kind of intervention or uh, you know any time, anything that might be used to help with gifted and talented uh, or anything in between. So uh, those are a couple of the different things that we looked at. Despite all those tools, there still are some missing links in terms of rounding out that 360 degree picture. One main area is when it comes to our universal assessment, we have students who are missing from that picture, and that's not okay to continue. We've had some groups that have been digging in and uh, looking for tools that will help to better meet our needs in terms of representing all our students, particularly when it comes to areas like Spanish literacy development and our bilingual students also at those very early grades in kinder and first on up. We also don't have consistent universal assessment of family and community engagement. We have the Gallup tool for student engagement now, but may want to explore that area. 
And when it comes to a universal assessment of pro-social behavior, we're better at assessing the negative than perhaps the positive side of that right now. We also uh, have some holes in the area of culturally responsive assessment in some areas as well. So despite lots of tools, there are some smaller <coughs> holes. Now, looking at the kids' role in all of that. There's a voice overlay here. We're going to adjust the volume. Otherwise, you get it live. For <laughs> challenge based learning, we're still setting individual learning goals around essential skills. <laughs> Students are engaged in assessment in a variety of means, one including project based learning or challenge based learning, where students set individual learning goals around essential skills and around content learning standards. In addition, student-led conferences allow for students to demonstrate their knowledge using rubrics to help them determine next steps in their learning, as well as students being involved in the creation of rubrics that are involved in their own assessment of learning. An example of students working on student-created rubrics. Okay. Students demonstrate understanding through casual conversation with a teacher who is utilizing reflective questioning strategies. With collaboration in Wicker, students are given multiple opportunities and flexible options to demonstrate proficiency. Summative student assessment. Prove you know the material and are able to apply it to everyday use in the context of the Health Academy. Peer feedback engages learners in their own growth. Going public provides students opportunities to show what they know. Demonstrate your learning. Students are able to demonstrate their understanding using a variety of assessment techniques. So I can talk about this one. My voice was supposed to come on. <laughs> but at the elementary level, we have uh, data delves at three times a year, and that's pretty consistent um, amongst all the schools. Um, so we use multiple data sources in order to determine uh, universal instruction, as well as tier assignments, tier two and tier three interventions. And hopefully, uh, we get to a place where we can do that within the classroom every day. Uh, but right now, uh, we are doing that at the elementary uh, three times a year. Hi, my name is Jill Anderson. I teach U.S. History at Waukesha West High School. And one of the assignments that I give my students that involves using data has to do with a book report that I give them for each semester. Um, Jill Davis printed out for me the impact scores for my students, and I use the Lexile range that's printed there to give it a grade equivalent. And then when we go to the library to choose books for the book report, students have to choose a book that is uh, close to their reading level. Um, this year I had some kids that were at a reading level of grade three, and I had other kids that were well above, um, they were in 11th, 12th grade reading level. So, this assignment will ask for me to differentiate 
appreciate the level of the reading based on the student's class score. This for many drugs. That was about the, was the use other of iPads. No. Okay. Don't worry about it. All right, so I had a voice over here too, but apparently it isn't working as well, so I'll just talk to um, we, You know, through the process, we also identified and targeted some areas for celebrations. Um, we have PD that, was, that has been provided on high quality assessments, rubric design tools. Um, the expectations regarding formative and summative assessments have been outlined. Uh, we also are data rich. We have multiple data points that we use on um, predetermined schedule throughout the school year. We've progress monitoring is, is coming along. We have Ames Web there as well. The data delves, as Ida had mentioned, are occurring at um, the elementary level three times a year at least. And the PLC structures are in place also to utilize that data as well. And some next steps, some things that we found uh, were some gaps in um, some of the evidence pieces that we collected. Um, it would be really nice to have a data dashboard, to have data that teachers can utilize every day that is one place and not in multiple areas, um, to really inform instruction on a daily basis. Uh, refine missing pieces such as, um, there were some pieces in the uh, VOE about equity audit and some culturally responsive pieces that we just had some discussion about and some of us were not aware of it. Um, also, the bilingual benchmarks, those gaps within maps for CAN1 and some other areas um, with special ed, um, and ensuring consistency and fidelity for all schools in every classroom. Um, as you saw in the re uh, responders, uh, that was one of the pieces that was um, evident in the data. Uh, and <coughs> building teacher capacity, we just remembering that teachers are the ones that need to know how to use the data to inform instruction. And the one-to-one -one technology for that instant feedback, like you had the experience um, today. And really using, the next step is using the uh, information that was provided, which was a quick snapshot um, at the beginning of our presentation, to really inform what our next steps are for our own schools. So that is our presentation today. Thank you very much.